Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to uh, Biblical Foundations class. And tonight we're going to be digging in uh, back into uh, Psalm 91. We're going to be looking at verse 4 tonight. But before we get there, we have some prayer requests. So let's go and check these out. Okay, some prayer requests today. Uh, please uh, keep David and Beverly Nauf in prayer. He has cancer uh, for the last year and was taken to the hospital yesterday. Uh, they know Jesus, so praise the Lord, but uh, please keep the family in prayer. And uh, so remember David in your prayers and pray that uh, the Lord would heal him and deliver him from this cancer. Also, a uh, prayer chain from, uh, from Jody and uh, her husband Mike. His uh, aunt Marilyn fell last night and broke her hip. And they're planning to operate on Monday, but her heart is in bad shape, so not too optimistic about that. However, if she doesn't have the surgery, she'll be, uh, you know, bedridden, and she doesn't want that. So please keep uh, Marilyn in prayer and, uh, and the rest of the family there for those uh, decisions they need to make. So let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you. Lord, we just pray for uh, David and Marilyn today, Lord. We just pray that uh, you would give doctors wisdom and knowledge, understanding, and how they, they treat them and help them. God, I just pray that your hand would be upon them. Um, help them to get well, Lord, and uh, give the doctors wisdom and how and, and what to do and to, uh, to speed along this the healing process. And Lord, we just pray also for uh, the families, that you would give them peace and comfort, whatever your will is in these situations, Lord. We thank you, and we just ask that, uh, again, your peace and your comfort would go uh, with each one of us. Lord, also tonight, just pray that your blessings would be upon the word tonight. We pray for peace in our nation. We ask that our leaders would, first of all, and first and foremost, that the leaders in this nation, whether they're in the federal government or states, uh, Lord, I pray that they would come to know you as Savior and Lord. I pray that they would repent of their sins and the rebellion against you, and that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray that you would turn the heart, turn the hearts of, of those leaders to you. And Lord God, we just thank you and we praise you. We ask for peace uh, that uh, we may have an opportunity to further get the gospel out. Uh, give us a window of time, Lord, please. And we also pray for the church around the world that each one of us, Lord, would be faithful in the mission, the job that you have given to us reaching people with the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name and ask that your blessings would be upon our study tonight. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. So tonight, Psalm 91. And we're going to be looking at verse 4. So let's go to Psalm 91. Praise God. This is really one of my very favorite uh, Psalms. So let's read verses 1 through 4. So we're, we're going to actually look at verse 4. We've already done verses 1 through 3, but we're going to read verses 1 through 4 tonight. <clears throat> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noise and pestilence. He mm -hmm. shall cover mm -hmm. thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Well, praise the Lord. You know, uh, this verse tonight, uh, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Such an important promise. And it's a wonderful promise mm -hmm. that we have from the Lord. And so many times they, they liken God's care um, to his, his children as, um, you know, a, a hen would care for its chicks and protect them and put them under um, its wings and, you know, defend them against uh, predators or, or any dangers that would come against them. They're, um, you know, very very uh, good at protecting you know their young ones and in the lord protects his people and he protects us in a powerful powerful way you know i thank the lord for uh, the promise of god's protection uh, you know in our lives and 
And uh, we know that uh, there's coming a time and there may come a time in our, in our lives that uh, we would suffer great uh, persecution. Uh, we would suffer for the, the name of Christ, and that's okay. I mean, I think each Christian has resolved that in their minds, that, that if they suffer persecution, if they suffer uh, tribulation because of the name of Christ, that they're okay with that, because they understand that they're taking part of the sufferings of Jesus. And so, um, you know, although that does not a, a pleasant thought to us, we're, we're resolved in, in saying, Lord, you know, you went through all of that for us. If we have to go through things in our lives, we are committed to standing for you. When I think about what Paul went through and, and think about what, you know, uh, the other uh, disciples went through, and we have record of that in, in the scriptures here, we can say that, uh, yes, you know, it is absolutely worth it to stand for the Lord, no matter the opposition that will come against you. And in this world today, we have plenty of opportunity for opposition to come against the church, and the church needs to stand and be faithful, to repent of sin, to be faithful. We have to get our house in order, right? We have to make sure that we have our lives in order, and then we need to reach out with the love of God, with the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. We, we can learn so much from the things that happened to Israel. Um, you know, extremely valuable information here in the scripture for what happened to Israel because it's examples for, for us today. Let's look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 in the light of this verse um, that we've been looking at here in Psalm 91. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, starting at verse 7. Let's read 7 down to 14, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats and the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink pure blood of the grape. You know, so it shows here God's caring protection for Israel, you know, for his the chosen people, it shows how God had protected Israel, had kept them, had, you know, taken them through, you know, through the, the wilderness and, and protected them, fed them, cared for them all through that, that experience. You know, their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. That, you know, they're wandering around 40 years and that, you know, man, that's, that's some good mileage on them, those clothes, right? You know, that was God's hand keeping keeping them and protecting them and sustaining them throughout that time. They didn't want for food because God supplied food every day. He provided manna from heaven. He even provided quails. Even, you know, it, 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 was, it was sad how the people did that. Uh, they should have been uh, content with what God was giving them, but uh, he did. He gave them quails and a lot of them. So, um, you know, but there's so much more that God did for his people. But it gives, again, it shows it and illustrates how um, it uses an eagle in this in this passage about how an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So protecting, keeping, providing, supporting, you know, that's what this eagle does. This The Lord does that in your life, you know. He keeps you he supports you. Your your feet don't slide because of the Lord. You know, if you're having the trouble, if you're having trouble in your life right now, maybe you're struggling against sin in your life. Look, here's what you do: go to God. 
go to God in prayer, say, Lord, I need your help. Support me. Help me. You know, help me overcome this. You know, whatever it is in your life, go to God and he can help you overcome that in your life, which is trying to destroy you. And so if you need protection, you know, Lord, these, these you know, these people are coming against my life. You know, I need your protection. The Lord will protect you. He rises up strong on your behalf. You know, trust and, and depend upon him and lean on him. The enemy that comes in, Satan, you know, comes in like a flood, but the Lord lifts up a standard against him. The Lord opposes him. You know, submit yourself to God and resist the devil. What, what happens when you submit yourself to God and resist the devil, the devil flees. He runs off. He takes off. He, he doesn't want any part of that because he knows who's protecting you. You know, he, he, the Lord is said that he's with you in that valley, in that dark valley, right? The valley of the shadow of death. He's with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. Amen. So God's there to protect you and correct you through that dark valley. And through this life, God is there and he will protect you and he will correct you in your life. So praise the Lord for that and thank him for that. So, you know, this again shows God's caring, his, his compassion for his people, for the children of Israel and for the church. You know, he cares for you. He, he looks after you. He, uh, you are precious in his sight. You are his, his children. The Lord will take care of you and care for you you know, all of your days, even in the midst of persecution, people say, well, I don't understand how that, that works out. Well, it's because your eyes are on this world and not on what's to come. You see, when you have the confidence and know that if I stay, praise the Lord. If I go, praise the Lord. You know, either way, praise the Lord. You know, the, the three Hebrew boys who are getting ready to be thrown in the fiery furnace by Nebuchadnezzar, what do they say? They said, you know, our God, if you know, he's able to deliver us, but, you know, if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down and worship your, your statue. We're not doing it. We're not going to compromise our faith. We're not going to compromise. You know, this is what they're talking about, compromise. We're, we're not going to do that. We're going to stand for the Lord. And they stood courageously. And, you know, being thrown in a fiery furnace was probably not a pleasant experience. But you know what? God sustained them through that, didn't he? He was right there with them. Because the, the king even says that, Nebuchadnezzar, didn't we throw three people in there? You know, who, who is the fourth one? And he looks like the son of God. You know, I mean, there you go. God is, is right there. He'll protect you. He'll keep you, sustain you all through the things that come against you in life. So, you know, I, I again have to say I praise God because in this generation at this time um, around the world, many Many Christians have been suffering persecution, trials, tribulations for, for a long time, and yet they remain steadfast, faithful to God, willing to go through, willing to lay down their very lives for the Lord. Amen? That's the way that we have to be. And in America, we've been protected against um, a lot of this persecution, a lot of these things. We've been very protected. But those days are closely soon soon over uh they're running out those days are are soon to be uh, a thing of the past and in america you will have to be standing for the lord jesus christ you'll have to your faith will be tested your testimony of christ will be tested persecution is coming to this this nation it absolutely is it's already started and um the enemy would like, and I'm talking to the enemy, Satan is the enemy. He would like nothing more than to destroy you, get you to compromise your testimony before the Lord. But don't do it. You need to resolve in your, your heart to be like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Whatever God allows in my life, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to stand for the Lord and be uncompromising in that. Run your race well. That's something I would tell you. Uh, Psalm 17. Psalm 17, look at verses 3 through 9. Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. You know, I just have to stop here on that part right there. My mouth shall not transgress. I pray tonight that Christians all over America read that verse 
my mouth, I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. We need to control our tongues. We need to speak those things that are good, right, and pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And whatever is not, it does not need to proceed out of your mouth. You know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're, blas you're blaspheming, you're cursing, you're doing that stuff, that's not from God. That's not from God. Mm -hmm. You call yourself a Christian tonight, you shouldn't be doing that. You need to control that tongue. Amen? And you're like, well, I don't physically say that. I just forward post that people are doing that. Well, then you're in agreement with it. Stop doing that. I'm going to tell you again. As a Christian, you have a responsibility to protect your testimony, right? It's about the glory of Jesus Christ. It's about bringing, bringing glory to Him. And if you are are you know spouting off at the mouth sending out stuff on facebook and social media and everything else how is that bringing glory to christ how is that glorifying his name when you're doing the exact opposite of what he told you to do you're supposed to walk in love you're supposed to represent jesus on this in this fallen earth at this time what are you doing what are you allowing in your life? Stop doing that. Let's keep reading. Concerning the works, uh, concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from them, those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about. You know, so God will protect God will protect you, you know, but here's, here's the, uh, there's a disconnect, okay, with, with Christians I've seen lately. I, there's a, there's a major, major, major disconnect, a problem. Christians want God to bless them, to answer prayer, to be strong on their behalf to do these things for them and yet in their words and actions put themselves in opposition to god you're asking god to bless you at the same time you're breaking his word and rebelling against him how does that work ask yourself this question have you ever been around a little toddler the little toddler comes up and asks you for something to eat? Absolutely. Little toddler comes in and starts throwing a royal fit, a, t a temper tantrum, and rolling all over the ground and screaming and yelling. And, and if you answer that, you're like, oh, you poor thing, you poor thing. I'll, let me just give you what you're asking for. You just, you just opened up a box of worms you don't want to get into because they're going to be worse the next time. And every time for the rest of their life, when they don't get their way, they're going to throw fits and tantrums and roll around and scream and cry. And that's going to be really embarrassing when they go to work. Right? Can you imagine that? And then yet some adults are doing that today anyway. <laughs> but seriously... Seriously, it doesn't go both, it doesn't go, you know, the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear me. That means you can't entertain sin and at the same time say, you know, oh, God bless me. Oh, God heal me. Oh, God protect me. And you're out there sinning against him and rebelling against him. It doesn't work like that. You need to repent. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, that God's not understanding you, you, you slip up and you trip. 
and that could happen. You slip up, trip, and, and sin against him. That, that'll happen in life. But what do you do? You repent of that sin. You turn to him. Lord, please forgive me of this. I, I messed this up. You restore that, that relationship, right? How can two walk together except they be agreed? You've got to get your life in agreement with God because he's not going to compromise his position. He's not going to change his position for you no matter how special you are. And it, it just it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when I see Christians openly rebelling against God and yet at the same time, oh, please pray for me. Pray, pray that God will heal me. Pray that God will do this for me. It's like you're rebelling against him. Stop doing that. You know, I want to pray for you, and I want to pray, you know, effectually, because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But you got to repent. you got to turn from your sin. Stop doing those things that God says not to do, right? If you want my prayer for you to be effective, then stop rebelling against God. Okay? I'm just saying, you know... It doesn't work like that. You can't disregard his word and just say, I'm going to live my life any old way I want to live it and God's going to bless me. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Look at Israel. That's our example. Do you read Jeremiah? Do you read Lamentations? Jeremiah was pleading with them, pleading with them to repent, pleading with them to turn from their sin, pleading with them to obey God. And they would not. And they lost it all, were carried away to Babylon. Because of rebellion. God loved them. But they put themselves in that position that God had to do something drastic to turn their hearts. And let me tell you, the chastening of the Lord, not so pleasant. He would rather have you be willing and obedient, right? You know, you're like, well, I, you know, I do this and I do that. But is your heart right before God? Because that's what he looks at. The Pharisees, they were doing all the outward religious stuff. Outwardly, they were looking good. They were doing all the, the special things, matter of fact, going up above and beyond, but their heart wasn't right with God. They were rebelling against him and they crucified his very own son. And Jesus said, I come in my father's name. You don't receive me. Another will come in his own name and him you'll receive. And Marie Anderson asked the question, uh, chastening like a spanking? Yes, ma'am. Just like that. It's, <laughs> it's, it is just like that. God wants to get your attention, to turn you from destruction. He loves you. He doesn't want you to continue down that road. And so, yes, just like a spanking. That's why in Psalm 23, when it says, you know, you know, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The staff, the shepherd's staff was meant to protect you know, that's, that shepherd's staff is what he uses to, to defend, you know, the sheep. But the rod? The, the rod is what he uses to, to correct the sheep that are getting out of line. <laughs> he used that rod to get them back where they need to be. Why? Because the shepherd hated the sheep? No, because he's trying to protect the sheep, because he loves the sheep. He wants, to, he wants the best for them. He, if he knows if they wander out there, a predator is going to take them out and destroy them. So God corrects us to protect us. And that's, you know, that's what his word does. That's why the Bible says preach the word. Rebuke, what is it? You know, for rebuke, exhort, we're supposed to rebuke, we're supposed to exhort, we're supposed to encourage these things that we're, we're supposed to do. And, you know, um, we're supposed to preach in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You know, rebuke, kind of like what's happening tonight a bit with some, you know, saying, hey, there's some Christians out there that are doing this. Quit doing this. Right? Exhort. I'm asking you, please turn. 
from those things. You can do this in God. God wants to protect you. God wants to keep you. God wants you to not walk in rebellion against him. Because you put yourself in a bad place, you're rejecting the truth. See, when you put yourself in, in, in rebellion against God, you say you're a Christian. I'm a Christian, but I'm rebelling against him. You put yourself in opposition to the truth. And yet, in this verse that we're looking at, in Psalm 91, verse 4, let me read it to you. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You know, that buckler was a thing that, you know, that went across your chest, you know, and it would keep, it actually keeps your armor stuff together there, that buckler. It, it's, it's protection here across your chest and a shield you know and it says his truth shall be thy shield and buckler right but you're not walking according to the truth guess what you don't have you don't have any way to protect yourself you have just taken your shield and dropped it and your buckler you ain't got it because you're not walking according to the truth his truth shall be thy shield and buckler the enemy wants to come in and destroy you. You have an enemy. Satan is an enemy. And he's an enemy that's been around a real long time. He knows very well how to destroy, deceive, um, and um, corrupt mankind. He's good at his job. There's a lot of people in hell today because of Satan's activities. And you need this armor. You need it. You need the truth of the word of God. You need it. And if you don't have this because you're in rebellion against God, the enemy will come in and take you out. And you know, the sad thing about it is it's not just you. You see, you put yourself in rebellion against God and that contaminates, infects, it's a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Your sin and rebellion impacts others. You know, you, you don't believe that? Then take a look. What happened when those great big ministries that were television ministries before? Remember great big ministries back in the 80s? Maybe some of you don't remember that. You, you, you saw it on the news or you saw it on, in a book somewhere. But let me tell you. Those big ministries, they collapsed and fell because of the leadership in those ministries wasn't doing what they needed to do. And because of that, how many Christians, how many Christians fell away due to discouragement, disappointment? This is why you don't put your eyes on man, okay? You put your eyes on the Word of God. This is the truth. The word of God is truth, not the TV preacher, okay? Not the, not the, you know, you live your best life now with a great big smile, okay? No. The scripture, the word of God, this is your, this is your, your protection. And, you know, we know Ephesians, uh, let's just go over Ephesians. I don't have it down here, but that we're going to do this, but let's go to Ephesians because I just want to go over this real quick. Ephesians, and you probably know this, but I want to tell you this. Chapter 6. Let's, let's read this. Verse, I want to start there. Okay, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the enemy, guys. That's the enemy. God's showing you who you're fighting. It is a spiritual enemy. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, because you have a spiritual enemy that you can't see. You see the symptoms, you see the, re the results of what he does, okay? 
but you you can't go outside and flip over a rock and in and, and find you know find the devil oh there he is there he is it doesn't work like that because you have an enemy that's it's an angel okay fallen one but still that's what he is and he's got one third of those fallen angels with him and they're going about deceiving mankind every day and the way to stand against wickedness to stand against this this enemy that is you can't see with your eyes but you can see the results death and destruction you know he comes to steal kill and destroy you see the results of his work you need to put on the whole armor of god wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints you got weapons you got a job to do and you got no time to be dabbling around in sin <laughs> you know this armor having your loins girt about with truth 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 is the most important thing in your life jesus is the way the truth and the life amen and and listen I, I, let me let me help you with this i know you hear terminology today well that's his truth or that's her truth or that's their truth but let me tell you there's one truth one jesus is the way the truth and the life god says here he says that about jesus here the lord jesus says what that he says thy word is truth amen thy word he said in ver in john 17 17 you want to look at it let's go to look at it john 17 verse 17 let's read the whole verse it says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth god's word is truth god's word is what he uses to sanctify you to make you more you know like him pleasing in his sight taking those things that are not like god out of you and that's what he uses is his word truth this is why you can't oppose the truth and say oh, i'm a christian but i'm opposing the truth no no it doesn't work like that stop rebelling against god stop stop cussing on facebook stop forwarding posts posts with profanities and things that are not right stop doing that. if you're calling yourself a christian quit it knock it off i can, i don't know if i can make it more clear than that for you it is not right for you as a christian to be doing that because that's how you are representing Jesus, you need to stop. You got one other option. Stop identifying yourself as a Christian. Because if you're doing that, and you're continuing in that, and that rebellion against God, you're not. Do you not fear God? The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And where do you draw the line in your life? You know, stop blaming everyone else for your sin and rebellion against God. Oh, I'm like this because of so much. So, oh, I'm this is because of that. This is because of this. No. The Bible says that you're led away by your own lust and enticed you need to repent take responsibility 
Go to God. Pour out your heart before him. We're not perfect people. I know that. But that is no excuse for you to continue in rebellion and sin against Almighty God. Because there is a day of accounting. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I am not talking about legalism here. I'm talking about getting real with God. I'm talking about getting your life in obedience with the Lord because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he said also, in the word of God, if you say you love him and you don't obey his commandments, you're a liar. And all liars will have their part of the lake that burns with fire. I'm just trying to keep you from that. I want you to turn from your sin and trust Jesus Christ. He's the truth. Do you know what happens when people reject truth? Do you understand what the Bible tells us what will happen? You want to look? Some of you know the answer to this already. 2 Thessalonians. We live in perilous times. We live at a time that it is not, it is not the time for you to be messing up. It's the time for you to get things right with God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Starting at verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Antichrist is soon to be on the world stage. That time is coming. God has a stern, stern warning here in his word about the truth. These people here that you read here, they didn't love the truth. They rejected it. They wanted to do it their own way. And God sends them, God sends them strong delusion that they would believe a lie because they reject the truth. There's biblical precedent for that Old Testament happen. You're like, well, I just, I just, you know, I don't know about that. Listen, God puts it plain. He puts it out there plain for you. He warns you, tells you the importance of truth. We want all the benefits of a relationship with God. Guess what? You have responsibilities too. God wants to bless you. God wants you to have... <laughs> an amazing life with him that doesn't mean trouble free you kind of have trouble in this life if you're living you're a human being you guess what you're going to have tribulation jesus told you to have persecution he told you but you can have life in christ eternal life you can have joy in christ that that nobody can take away from you you can have peace in christ right but you can't live a double life as a Christian, you need to get real with God. you either all in with him or you're all out. You can't be lukewarm. He said he'll spew you out of his mouth. So make a decision. Make a decision. But don't make the wrong one. Because hell is hot. It's a place of torment where the worm doesn't die fire's not quenched. When you live in rebellion against God, that's where you go. 100%, that's where you go. 
Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. When temptation comes, resist it. When you get angry and upset about things that you see happening in the world, what did we say last week? Pray. Go to prayer. It will do more than you ranting and raving on social media. Go to prayer. Get your life, get your house in order. Jesus is coming soon. Time is running out. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Love you guys. We'll talk you talk with you again tomorrow night. Uh, if, if you're able to, encouraging word, 6 o'clock, Lord willing. We'll see you then. Think about these things. I know it's serious. I know it's nothing that, you know, that you haven't heard before. But time is running out. Time is running out. Get real with God. He loves you. He deserves all of your heart, not just part. God bless. Good night.